morning ladies and gentlemen today we're going to talk about adding and subtracting fractions now the first thing that i want to talk about is simplifying and simplifying isn't adding and subtracting fractions but it's an important skill that we need to use uh, when we add and subtract fractions now simplifying is just finding an equivalent fraction that has the smallest numbers possible so an example here would be if I had two quarters and I showed that on my diagram two quarters and I colored two of these quarters in one two two quarters is half of my total amount two quarters is equal to one half one half is an equivalent fraction of two quarters but it is the smallest possible fraction now all we had to do here was look at two quarters and say what is the smallest possible fraction I can make from this and to do that I look at my numerator and denominator and I find a factor that goes into both of them. We call that a common factor. So a common factor of 2 and 4. What goes into 2 and 4? Well, 2 goes into 2 and 2 goes into 4. So if I just divide by 2 over 2, I will get 1 over 2. I've divided by 2 over 2. Dividing by 2 over 2, 2 over 2 is equal to 1. Dividing by 2 over 2 is the same as dividing by 1. Alright, any number divided by 1 is the same as it was. 5 divided by 1 is equal to 5. 3 divided by 1 is equal to 3. 2 quarters divided by 1 is equal to 2 quarters. Alright. This shows us that 2 quarters is an equivalent fraction of a half. Now, you might notice that we are dividing at the moment. And in the past, when we found equivalent fractions, we were multiplying. The reason we're dividing is because when we simplify, we want the smallest possible equivalent fraction. So, we are going to get smaller and smaller every time. Now, if we look at some other examples here we've got 6 27ths how am I going to simplify this well as we said before we try to find a common factor of the numerator and the denominator so the, the factors of 6 are 1 2 3 and 6 and the factors of 27 are 1 3 9 and 27 can we spot any common factors well yes 3 is a factor of both of them so all I need to do is say 6 27ths divided by 3 over 3 3 over 3 is the same as 1 I'm just dividing by 1 find an equivalent fraction and that's going to give me 6 divided by 3 is equal to 2 27 divided by 3 is equal to 9. Now, sometimes after I've simplified once, I can still simplify if, if I can still divide by more. But 3 is the highest common factor of 6 and 27, which means that my answer will be simplified fully. If we try something else for 8 64ths, we might see a different result. Now, if I have 8 64ths, oh man, I can't remember my times tables all that well, but I know that 2 is a factor of 8 and 64 because they're both even numbers. So, I can just divide by 2 over 2. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 64 divided by four, uh, 2 is 32, and I get 4 32s, or 4 out of 32. But, 
this is not fully simplified yet. I've still got two even numbers here. I can still keep making these numbers smaller. So I have to keep continuing to make it smaller. 432s divided by 2 over 2 is equal to 2 over 16, 2 sixteenths. Is this fully simplified yet? No, it isn't. I can I still have two even numbers, so I can still divide that by 2 over 2 again. 2 sixteenths divided by 2 over 2 is equal to 1 over 8. Now, this is fully simplified. I cannot possibly find an equivalent fraction with smaller numbers than these. All right, an easy way to tell that you've done is if you've got a numerator of 1. Some of you would have been able to see at the very beginning when we had 8 out of 64 that 8 is a factor of 64. Alright, so we could have done this all in one step if I divided by 8 over 8 because 8 is a factor of 8 and 8 is a factor of 64. And in fact, it is the highest common factor of 8 and 64. If you divide by the highest common factor of both numbers, you always end up with a fully simplified answer. So if we do this, we get 8 divided by 8 is 1, and 64 divided by 8 is 8. Would you look at that? 1 8 over here, 1 8 over here. I, did, I simplified it in two different ways, but I still got the fi same final answer. And... It's fine to simplify in whatever way is easiest for you. Um, if you want to do it in steps and keep getting smaller and smaller, that's fine. If you want to just find the highest common factor all the way at the beginning uh, by listing all the factors and seeing which one is the biggest, that's also up to you. As long as you end up with an answer that is in its completely simplest form. Now, the reason we've spoken about this is because when we add and subtract, we sometimes get answers like 2 eighths or 4 sixteenths or 3 ninths as our answer, but we need to simplify that to make it the smallest possible final answer. All right, so with that being said, we can now move on to adding and subtracting fractions. When we add and subtract, add and subtract fractions there are a few things that we need to consider and they are rules that we've considered in the past but maybe it's time to have a refresher if i look at this example i've got an apple and an orange and i said hey i want to give you half of an orange and half of an apple got half of an orange plus half of an apple a half and a half we know is equal to one whole but half an orange plus half an apple that's not going to give me a whole I can't possibly tell what half an apple plus half an orange will give me is it going to give me half an app orange or half of an or apple those aren't real things so unless we're talking about the same whole our answer is not going to make sense. On the other hand, if we had two holes that were the same, I could then add them. But there's something else we have to consider. If over here I have half an orange and over here I have a quarter of an orange, what is that going to be? This is one half plus one quarter. Now we're talking about two things that are the same size whole, but we are talking about different size parts. They've got different denominators, the one split into quarters, the one split into halves. Now, some would be tempted to just add the numerators. One plus one is two and add the denominators. Two plus four is six. But if we have a look at a new orange here, and I said, okay, let's split this up into six equally sized pieces. 
two sixths would just be this amount over here. Now, this already we can see is less than a half. How is it possible that a half plus a quarter is going to be less than a half? It's simply not true. So, when we add fractions, we need to make sure that we deal with things that are parts that are the same size. And when we add those things together, the, the, the size of the parts does not change. Let's see how we would do that. I go back to my example with one half plus one quarter. How, can I change my quarters into halves? No, I cannot. But I can change my half into quarters. All I need to do is double the amount of pieces and or half the size of those pieces. So now I can see that one half is equal to two quarters. So what I actually get is two quarters plus one quarter. And that is equal to now my parts don't change their size, just the amount changes. I had two quarters and I added an extra quarter. The size of the parts doesn't change, the amount does. So two quarters plus one quarter is equal to three quarters. And essentially all I did was find an equivalent fraction for a half that has the same denominator as my other fraction. And that is exactly what we need to do when we add fractions. So if I subtract fractions, that is the same thing. Let's look at an example where I have three quarters of an orange. And I want to take away one half of that orange. Okay, so all I need to do is say, well, I've got three quarters and I want to take away a half. I can't take away that half because I need to have parts that are the same size. So I need to change that half into quarters. So that one half is equal to two quarters. So I get three quarters minus two quarters. Now I've got two, part, uh, two fractions with the same size parts. I can quite easily do this. Three quarters minus two quarters is equal to one quarter. And this is actually just the, re the reverse of what we did on our last problem. But I hope it illustrates the point. Now, we also get some examples where we have our final answer as more than one whole and what that looks like is if I had my apple and I wanted to add another apple I've got two apples here um, and I've got different fractions of each of them let's say I ate half of this apple and I threw the other half away for lunch and I had three quarters of this apple over here and I threw the last quarter away how many apples did I eat in that day well for lunch I had half an apple and for my later afternoon tea I had three quarters of an apple now again we've got different sized parts what do I need to do I need to convert my parts in my half to become quarters all right one half is equal to two quarters and I add that to three quarters I now end up with five quarters now wow that doesn't make any sense how can I have five quarters well it's actually quite simple if I look up at my picture here I have three quarters and I have 
two quarters. If I take this quarter, this top right quarter of my first apple, and I carry it across to here, that gives me four quarters or one whole. And I get left with this quarter here. So I have four quarters plus one quarter is one and a quarter. Five quarters is equal to one and a quarter. All right. And if we if we wanted to look at that a different way, we could say that five quarters is equal to four quarters plus one quarter, which is equal to one plus a quarter, which is equal to one and a quarter. All right. This is an example of what we would do if we ended up with a fraction that was greater than one uh, because we'd added different fractions together. All right. We can also look at an example where we subtract. If I had one and a quarter apples, all right, one and a quarter apples, and I wanted to say, well, my mom gave me one and a quarter apples for lunch, and I dropped half of an apple on the floor so I couldn't eat it how much apple did I end up eating for lunch well I've got one and a quarter minus a half how can I possibly do this well I'd need to convert my whole apple into quarters to find out how many quarters I had all together well one and a quarter is one two three four five quarters I have five quarters and I need to take away the half apple that I dropped on the floor okay so now I've got quarters and a half I can't work with these because I've got different sized pieces let's turn this half into quarters so that I've got the same size pieces this is going to give me five quarters minus two quarters and that is going to equal three quarters so i started off with one and a quarter apples i dropped half of the of one apple on the floor and i got left with three quarters of an apple which i ate for lunch all right so this is an example of uh, a fraction that is greater than one which we converted into an improper fraction so that we could uh, work with work it out so as a summary we can look at these two rules and think about them in the context of adding and subtracting the first rule is that the fractions need to be as part of the same whole now if you're just adding two fractions that aren't part of a story, we assume that they're part of the same whole. If I just gave you one third and one half, add those together, you would assume that the whole is the same size. But the second thing that we need to make sure is that the parts are the same size. So if I gave you one third plus one half, you would have to say, well, these denominators are not the same they're not the same size parts and you'd have to find equivalent fractions for each of them to make their parts the same the same as we did when we worked with comparing fractions so that should be easy enough for you um, let's have a quick look at one final example of adding numbers with different size parts if I had two apples and I had one that was broken up into quarters and another one that was broken up into thirds. And I said, I need to add one quarter and one third. You can see that these sizes are different. 
let's shade in one quarter here and we'll shade in one third over here now the same as when we were doing our comparing numbers we need to make sure that our parts are the same size how can i decide what that's going to be well i look at my denominators uh, i know that four and three if i multiply them together four times three is equal to 12 so i want to find an equivalent fraction for both of these where the denominator is going to be 12 because i know that four will go into 12 and i know that three will go into 12. what i do to a quarter is i say one quarter times by three over three is equal to 3 over 12 1 third times by 4 over 4 is equal to 4 over 12 okay so 1 quarter is equal to 3 twelfths so I get 3 twelfths plus 1, th uh, one third is equal to 4 twelfths and all I did here really was say, well, in my first apple here, I've got one quarter. I need to divide each of these in, into twelfths, which means I need to divide each of these into three equally sized pieces. So one, two, one, two. Now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, my one quarter is equal to one two three of those 12 and if i look at my thirds each of those thirds needs to be broken up into four equally sized pieces um, it's a bit difficult to do it in this shape but we can try one two three one two three one two three and if we add all of those up, it would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 pieces. And 1 third would be 1, 2, 3, 4 of those 12 pieces. 1 third is equal to 4 twelfths. So what I end up with is two new fractions of the same size parts. I have 3 twelfths plus 4 twelfths. That's going to be equal to 7 twelfths and that will be my final answer so my fractions were part of the same whole and the parts were the same size or well, they weren't to begin with so i made them the same size in the same way that we practiced in the past and then i could add them together i hope that you guys all followed me on this tutorial please try your best to answer the questions using this information if you need to go back and look at the video again uh, to help you go through the steps to solve the problems please feel free to uh, to go and do that um, and if you have any questions please just post a private message on the assignment and i'll get back to you as soon as possible and please any questions that you get incorrect on the assignment i will have feedback for each question Click on the feedback, see what happened, see where you went wrong, and try and fix it on the next set of questions. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day and good luck. Bye.